Hello, welcome back to the window of the shop. Are your windows exposed and you need to cover them? Well, gee whiz, you should probably build these panels that we also built and they're really cool. No, like literally, they're cool. They're insulated. So we have an issue. Now we have these dark gray black curtains, up to you to decide what color it is. I think it's dark gray, but you may dispute me if you would like. They cover our two windows in the shop. Now our, our shop is uh, very bright and colorful as you've probably seen in our videos. And if you haven't, welcome. Uh, so we have these, these curtains to, to keep people from viewing inside because we like our privacy and also so we don't disturb our neighbors because we have neighbors and we don't want to disturb them. But these are disgusting. They're covered in sawdust. I mean, ugh, ugh, gross, disgusting. Also, they're mine and I want them back. So we're going to build something to fix this problem that we are having now. To build these window covers, we built panels that look like the shop on one side, so it matches everything in here. And on the other side, it looks like the blinds that we have across the front of our house. We did this so that we put the panels in the windows, the HOA people will leave us alone. First, we got a bunch of wood cut for us so it would fit in our car. Next, we measured the width of the boards that we just got cut so we could begin creating the borders for the insulation panels. For all of the internal structure, we use eight foot long, two inch wide pine strips. And for this instance, we cut them down to 30 and a half inches on the chop saw, or I guess the miter saw is what most people call it. Next, we squared up the corners of the pine boards that we just cut and we measured the new length of the internal structure. There's gonna be three strips for the inside just to make sure that it's completely structurally sound. Now we do the same procedure that we did the last time and just cut all the boards on the miter saw. After the internal strips were cut, we marked the center position on the top and bottom and on the center pieces so that we could, well, center them. Because if your stuff isn't centered, you just look stupid. And we don't want the other carpenters to make fun of us. Next, we glue down all the insulation border panels down onto the main panel. There's lots of panels. We did all this twice because we have two panels for the two windows that we have out here in the shop. We stack the two panels on top of each other and then put heavy things on top of those to make sure that the joints were extremely secure and were not going anywhere so that they can be square or less than square, kind of like how ours are, that they can be. Remember how we marked the midpoint of these longer boards earlier in this video? If you forgot, it's okay, you can rewind. Uh, now we're attaching the ears to those middle points. They're just being glued down, so it's nothing crazy, but the glue should hold it plenty strong for the duration that we need it to, which is forever. Also, everyone, please look at my socks during the duration of this video. They look really cool the entire time. Thank you for your time. To insulate the panels, we got this blue foam at the hardware store. Next, we measure the length and width of the internal insulation cavity. They're each slightly different, give or take about a quarter of an inch because we're not the most precise, but I think we're doing pretty good for not being the most precise, as I have just said. So we transferred the dimensions that we just recorded onto the insulation so we could install it. With the foam marked and laid out, we cut a test piece out to make sure it fit which it did. It fit rather well. So we cut out the other three pieces and boom, we had two insulated panels. Now it's time to build the side of the panel that looks like blinds, but isn't blinds, but looks like blinds. We have blinds that look like this on our house. They're brown and wood, and they look like this. You know what else looks like brown blinds? Well, at least from a distance, beadboard. This is the stuff they make wainscot out of in houses. It's sometimes used to armor sheetrock against toddlers. Then we cut two strips out for two panels that we'll explain in just a few minutes. As we discussed earlier, the blinds across the front of our house are brown. So we got some brown wood from the hardware store that was as close to the brown on our regular blinds as we could find, and we painted the beadboard 
what we hoped would be the same shade. It actually worked out pretty good and turned out much better than expected. The colors inside the wood shop are orange and gray. Our giant orange pegboard, which we call the orange monstrosity, is already on this wall, so we opted for gray for these two panels. The next day. Now that everything is painted and dry, we apply this really cool caution tape. Remember how we installed the ears earlier with glue? Well, here's where they're used. After the tape was secured around the edges, we centered the handles on the ears and also to the midpoint, or, or around the midpoint-ish, it's not exact, to the middle of the panels. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's finally time to put on the brown backing of the whole panel. As far as the structure goes, this thing's done. We used one inch sheetrock screws because they're cheap and they're really easy to use. We placed them around the corners in the middle of the board just to make sure that it couldn't warp over time. The panel rests on the bottom of the windowsill, but to hold the top we needed something else. So we put a magnetic strip across the top that will interface with the second magnetic strip we'll put at the top of the window. And hopefully the power of the two magnets together will keep the panel in place and it will not fall and crush us. The magnetic strip across the top of the windowsill was easy enough to apply. But after we built it, we discovered that the magnets are not strong enough in this form and it barely holds the panel in place. We'll be replacing these with something more powerful later, but for now, they'll do the job. These panels will be used for stickers, of course. That's what we do with stuff like this, but the first sticker going on to it is the Dog Zebra sticker, which indicates how it will be used. Dog Zebra is a Navy thing. To cover the window, all you do is you pick up the panel, put it in the hole. Nice and clean, easy to do. The whole thing is super light and easy to put into place. We have a paint booth here in the shop that exhausts paint fumes out through the window. So instead of building this panel to cover the entire window, we built this little shelf with a small panel below it so that we could interface the exhaust tube. And if we ever have anything else that exhausts outside, it'll go out this small panel. All we have to do is open the window behind it and we can let the paint fumes go out all day long. In fact, we got a paint job in here right now that this works through. So this little shelf and this panel is for extraction of fumes and that sort of thing. We cut the faceplate and spare pine board on the miter saw, as is. Then we glued and screwed the whole thing together to create a really neat looking shelf. The faceplate attaches later, but it's there as a spacer to make sure that we have enough space for it to look neat and interesting and like it belongs. It's the details that matter. A note from me, Hannah. Uh, you might have noticed that I've been using this cool glue thing and then I keep tipping it over. Uh, that's because I'm using it wrong. You're supposed to tighten the cap all the way and then the pressure is supposed to push the glue out, but I didn't know that and I've been using it incorrectly literally this entire video. Don't worry, I figured it out. For those of you who know what it is, please do not yell at me in the comments because I'm sensitive and that hurts my feelings. Thank you. Good night. The shelf slips easily into the windowsill. Well, it would if our windowsill was actually square, which ours is not, but it eventually went in. And then it just requires two screws to hold the edges in place. That's all the strength we need here because there's not a lot of weight going to be on this shelf. The panels that will go on the shelves are kind of thin, so we went ahead and drilled four pilot holes to keep from splitting the wood when we put the screws in. The faceplate used these cool pan-headed screws, but we needed to use pilot holes to make sure that we wouldn't split the wood. So I put pilot holes and then I put the pan screws and there it is. Oh, it looks so good. We added the exhaust port to the only panel that currently requires it by using a three inch hole cutter. The vented panel attaches just like the unvented panel on the other side. And then the tube for the paint booth is screwed on and we have an exhaust port for our paint fumes. And that's it, we're all done. Well, that's the window panels. They're fantastic. I mean, they, they cover the window, they keep light out, everything's great. And most importantly, I got my curtains back. I still gotta clean them because they're still disgusting. 
but it's fine. They're mine again. But if you like that video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon if you don't want to miss uh, an upload. Uh, we've passed a thousand subscribers. Woo! Thank you.